Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we are going to talk about a very set of important QA processes called TDD. This is going to be a two part video. In the first part, we're going to talk about TDD and what TDD is. And in the second part, we are going to talk about BDD and what BDD is. And we are going to compare the two and see how you can get a lot of value and output by combining both the processes into a single process. So in this video, we're going to talk about TDD. So let's just get stuck in right away. So first of all, what is TDD? TDD is an acronym and it stands for Test Driven Development. The whole idea of TDD is to essentially write test before you write any of the implementation code. So for example, let's just assume that we have some functionality in some form of main class and it does something. It really doesn't matter what that something is. It just does something. And one day, a new requirement for that particular application comes in whereby you have to add on more functionality. So as part of both of these TDD and BDD, we'll use some actual examples to try and figure out what each of the two means. I have created a simple cat object. All it does is it has a name and it has a constructor and it allows us to get the name of the cat. And I've also written a very basic test which just tests just that. The fact that we can create a cat and the fact that we can assign a name to the cat via the constructor so when the cat object is initialized. And the fact that when we call the get name method it returns exactly what we expect it to return i.e. the value that we pass it in the constructor. Now TDD is like I said a concept of actually writing a test first and then going and implementing the code. So why is that important and how does that actually help us? If we take the current presence of this particular application, here we have an object which does nothing but returns us the name of the cat which we pass to it when we initialize it and here we have a test just testing that. Let's assume that the object was created first and the test was written second. All the test is doing is effectively testing a very particular feature or a very particular functionality but it's important to understand that this particular test whatever it is testing wasn't really something that was given or rather introduced to the whole testing cycle by say an outside requirement. In other words this test is something that could potentially just have been made up by someone arbitrarily. This test effectively had almost no influence from anyone other than the developer most likely. TDD allows us to almost spin that whole concept around and it allows us to really think about what it is that we're trying to implement. So let's go through this as an example together. So let's just say we have a cat and we want to be able to change the name of the cat. So at the moment that functionality just simply does not exist, which is good. Now let's just say this idea of changing the name of the cat actually came from somewhere from a very business or planning orientated aspect. For instance, let's just say we were in some kind of technical architecture meeting or some kind of planning meeting, something where we as a team decided that we need to be able to change the name of the cat. Yes, we can very easily just come here, write the method and then go and write a test. But then that's very defeatist because that doesn't really help us to actually ensure that whatever we wanted to implement is what we actually asked as part of the implementation, i.e. whatever the, the team discussed or the individual discussed or the business discussed. It doesn't really guarantee that that is exactly what we wanted to implement in the first place. So that is why we write a test first. So now let's say we're going to write a test 
and let's just say that this test is actually being written by more than one person at the same time usually between two people the first day is usually someone who understands the requirement so it could be a QA it could be a BA so when these two particular persons sit down and they write a failing test first usually the functionality doesn't exist because well because it doesn't exist we haven't implemented any of the code yet so let's actually do this together so let's write a basic test and we're just going to say public void should be able to change the name of the cat and let's just say given I have a cat when I create the cat and change its name then the name of the cat should be the new name or rather the changed name okay so let's actually write this out so first we have a cat okay and then what we want to do is let's say we have a string called name which is going to be kitty and let's say we also have a string called changed name which is going to be sparky and let's actually create the cat now with the name so up to this point the cat object does exist and this will all pass without any issues but this is where we really get into the tdd now what we will do is we will say something like cat.set name and let's set it to the changed name now obviously this method does not exist in our cat object and that's a good thing because now when we run the test we know that it will fail but that's not what we're focused on at the moment at the moment what we are focused on is actually writing a full test all the way up to the end and being satisfied that when this test eventually passes it will definitely capture the requirement that we are trying to satisfy so we're going to do one final thing which is just to assert and we're going to assert a true and we're going to say cat dot get name equals change name so now if I run this and it's compiling an error on the fact that this particular method doesn't exist but again ignoring that if we just take a look at this test on its own then we can see that this test actually does capture the requirement that we are trying to implement so even though the test passes this does capture exactly what it is that we want to actually get our application to do so this is a test now that is fully valid it captures influence from outside of the development domain i.e whatever the BA or the QA has asked for this captures it so now let's just assume that the QA and the BA and and the developer are all, all happy with this test the QAs and BAs and product owners whomever they may be they can now go away and the developer can now come and actually start to write code which eventually allows this test to pass so the first important phase of TDD is to actually write a test that everyone accepts which fails if this test fails then that is evidence that the code which we would need to write to implement the new feature does not exist so now what we can do is we can go back to our cat object and actually start to write code which allows us to then run this test and pass so at the moment we know the only thing that this test has an issue with is this particular method i.e. to be able to set the name and what this needs to do is actually set the name of the cat to whatever value we pass it so if I go back and if I say public void set name and I'm going to pass it a string and all I'm going to say is this dot name is equal to name 
So now if I go back, we notice that this is now not flagged as an error. If I run this, then this passes. Because now we've written the code which satisfies the test. So what have we actually done? We've done a couple of things. And there are some really important points note here. The first thing we did was we wrote a test which failed, but the focus wasn't on the test failing. The focus was primarily on to ensure that the test captures the requirement. The second focus was to make sure that the test actually fails. If the test fails, then that means that we haven't implemented any of the feature yet. Once the test failed, what we did was we actually went back to the capped object and started to implement the code. And we came back and we ran the test again. And the test then passed. So by doing it this way, what we've effectively done is forced our application to be coded in such a way that it is exposed much more easily to the testing side of the code. So by doing TDD, i.e. test driven development, what we're basically doing is we're forcing our test to drive our development. In other words, we're forcing our test to have a great influence on how we write the code and how the code is exposed so that it is easily more testable. By doing it this way, we also capture requirements much more easily. We ensure that the requirements that we capture are true to what they should be. And once we actually eventually end up writing the code and coming back and running the test, assuming that the test passed, that gives us enough confidence and enough evidence that whatever we've written is actually exactly what we've been asked to deliver. So that is the whole point of TDD. So in this video, we discussed TDD and how we can use TDD to write tests which allow us to write our code or develop our code in such a way that it's more easy to test. But more importantly, what we've done is introduce this concept of writing failing tests first, which prove that a functionality doesn't exist, and then getting it to pass, which then proves that our functionality does exist. And that's it for this video. In part two, we will discuss what BDD is and how it relates to TDD. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.